Hello friends, it's Dylan Young, Developer Advocate at Sitecore. Today I'm joined by Sarah O'Reilly, a Sitecore Sales Engineer at Sitecore, who came over during the Box Ever transition. She will run through a specific use case of using Sitecore Connect with Sitecore CDP to create segments based on various criteria and then send those audiences using Audience Sync to Google Ads for marketing campaigns. If you like today's topic, please subscribe and like today's video. Also feel free to comment and let us know if there are any other use cases you would like us to cover. So with that being said, let's jump on in and watch Sarah's presentation. So to start off with, this is my simple segment that I've set up in Sitecore CDP. So here I can see I'm looking for customers that have had a session in the past one day on the web that they have an email that's populated in the system. That's important because in Google Ads, we're gonna be using the email in order to link the user to an existing account and therefore target them on their Google searches. And at the bottom here, we can see we're excluding customer that have purchased either an online or offline order in the past one day. So one of the advantages here of using Sitecore CDP for creating these segments and pushing them across to Google Ads is that we can do things like this. We can use data from multiple different sources, such as online and offline orders. All of that has been imported into Sitecore CDP. And now it's very straightforward to set up segments that are really using a very rich data set across online, offline, multiple different channels, for example, as well can be included. But looking here at the details, I can see this last ran yesterday in my case, and I can see here where exactly it's being used. So for example, I can see it's being used in two different audience syncs, which is for exporting the segment into an external system, one for Google Ads and one for Pinterest in this case. I'm gonna have a look at the one for Google Ads. So we're gonna open this up. So this is the setup of the audience sync to export the segments. I can see here, for example, I'm using that same segment we just looked at. Here it is a scheduled batch that's running and it's, it's creating a file and it's putting that into AWS for it to be picked up by Sitecore Connect, which we're gonna be using in this case. And it's scheduled to run from the 16th of February. We can see here the last time it was triggered was yesterday and there was 17 people in that segment. I have access to logs here if I wanna download these and look at them as well and see exactly what happened when this was executed. If I have a look at the details here, I can see how it's set up. Here is where I've, changed, I've set up my schedule and I can easily change that if I want to based on different dates here. So I can set up a new schedule. I can change the time, for example, that this is running at and I can alter the start date or give it a number of um, days until the schedule ends, for example. Here's where I've chosen my segment. And down here is an email to be notified. And I've also set up for a web hook to be sent every time this is completed. This web hook is going to Sitecore Connect. And when this is triggered, it's basically going to trigger a recipe in Sitecore Connect that I'll show you to pick up this file in, Am in Amazon S3 and then push that file into Google Ads. So this here is set up to put the file into Amazon S3. I have set up my export to be in JSON. I could change that to be a CSV if I wanted to. And this is what's going to be in my export. So you can see here I have email, first name, last name. I have date of birth, nationality, etc. A number of different things that I'm exporting here. It could actually for Google Ads simply just be email, but I'm exporting a few other things here also. And that's it. I've now set this up. Okay, so before we run through a demo of this, we're gonna have a look at the setup inside Google Ads. So I'm gonna be exporting into this audience here, the CDP audience. We can see here that it's open and the ID for it is starts with 760. Okay, so if I have a look at this audience, I have a look at the segment membership. We're gonna see that earlier today, I didn't upload using an API. And before that, I also didn't upload using a CSV. So there's two entries here in the uploads against this. So now what I am going to do is we're going to trigger this now using Sitecore Connect. So if I go into Sitecore Connect, I'm now going to run through um, this particular recipe that's going to take my audience and push it into Google Ads. So let's have a look at this recipe before we run it. 
So the first thing it's doing is it's being triggered off a webhook that's going to be received. This is the same webhook that I was showing you that's being triggered from Sitecore CDP. So this is the URL for that. And inside that webhook, there's some information on one of, such as the flow ref, the segment ref, the status. This is a webhook that's automatically triggered by Sitecore CDP and sent across. Then what we're doing is we're using this integration to Sitecore CDP to pick up the URL for the file that has been uploaded into S3. For each of those URLs, if multiple are returned, we're then going to get the file from the URL and uncompress the file. If there's multiple files in this list, we're then going to run through this sequence here. So once the file has been uncompressed, what we're then going to do is we're basically going to take out the data and we're going to hash it as well. So we can see here, for example, I have a simple um, piece of Python here that I've inserted here in order to hash the email. So code snippets such as this one can be easily inserted into a workflow such as this. You can see my one here is just 25 lines long, very short. And the main thing that it's doing here is it's taking my email that's in the input it's hashing it because it's the format required by um, Google Ads, and then it's taking that hashed email, and we're then going to use it to connect with Google Ads. Next here, we can see a number of functions for Google Ads. So before we run through those, I'll just show you how they were set up. So you can see here, for example, I have a number of different options. I can set up an if statement. I can have a repeat action, such as these that I have here for looping through multiple different um, items in a list or anything like that. Uh, or I can handle errors, or I can call a function I've already created, or anything like that. I can also do an action in an application. So for example, here, we can see some of the applications that are available in Sitecore Connect. There's also a number of additional apps here. So for example, I can see there are many more apps available that I could be connecting to. There's thousands of native applications available inside Sitecore Connect. The one I'm going to be using is Google Ads, so I can click on this here. And we can see here, I have a number of kind of um, actions that are available for me to click on and start iterating through. So for example, if I want to search for records, I can click on this here and start searching, for example, for all my user lists that I have available. I can then query that and see what comes back. So that's one example. What I've set up here is some custom actions. So by that, I mean here we can see I can also set up my own custom actions. So I've set up three of these. And what I've set them up to do is to um, start an offline user job within Google Ads. So what we want to do here to add customers to our audience is to create an offline user job. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our offline user job. So here what I'm doing is this is the ID for my Google Ads account. So this is the ID here. This is the one that matches my ID at the top here. So I'm using this ID here. And then I'm basically saying that I want to create a new offline user job. And then in the request, I'm sending through this ID, 760, and this is the one for my user list. So we can see this here, my CDP audience user list, and that's all set up. Um, next, what I'm doing is I am creating an ad operation for all the users in my list. So this is where I'm putting in my hashed email. So we can see here my hashed email. And I'm taking my hashed email here from step seven. So you can see here when I click on this, I can see all my recipe data that I have available to me um, up until this action. So up until, for example, step nine, all the different pieces of data that I have. If I have a look at step seven, I'll see here that the, there's some outputs from step seven, and one of those is hash email, and that's exactly what I'm using here. So I can, for example, pull it, it's actually recommending it to me here based on the data pill it thinks makes the most sense in this case, or I can just pull it over. And that's how I've started populating these fields in terms of what I want to be sent across to Google Ads for the audience. That's looping through each of the people that are in my file and updating them there as one single kind of action. So it's up to sending across the entire list. What it's then finally doing is it's finally going to run, for example, um, that particular offline data user job that I've just set up. So we have all this set up as like three steps here that are setting up my offline user data job for Google Ads. Okay, so now that we've run through how that works, we're just going to run a test. So in order to run a test, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press test here. 
And the first thing that's happening is it's waiting to receive that web hook from Sitecore CDP. So what we're gonna do in this case is to simulate this behavior, I'm just gonna trigger this web hook coming across. So this is an example of what that web hook would look like if it was coming from Sitecore CDP. Usually this happens on a schedule when I've set up my audience sync to run regularly. So I've just pushed that across here. So you can see here, my web hook has just been received. So I can see the details of my web hook there. For example, my flow ref and my segment and the date that it's running on. I can see what's come back from Sitecore CDP. So this is the URL where my file exists. Uh, then what's happening is for each of those URLs, if there was multiple, we're then getting the file back from the URL. Uh, we're uncompressing that file, so it's coming back here. And then we're looping through each of the files in that list. Again, if there were multiple, in this case, there's just one. Um, we're then taking the input of the file itself and we're basically exporting it to be um, each of those hashed emails. So again, we can see the input here, but all the details of the users that were in my file and the output then is this list here with all the hashed emails coming back. So I can see all of these emails have now been hashed. We're then um, creating that job inside Google Ads. So we can see here the output here is my resource name and then sending across um, each different piece of data that I want to be updated. And I am then running that job, for example. So I can see those details here too. If I go back into Google Ads, I'm just going to give this a refresh. And I can see here now that my audience here is populating. So it's updated to tell me it's populating. And I can open this up. If I have a look now in my segment memberships, I'll see now there's a third row that's come in here for the time that I've just run it now. So we can see here now that I've just updated this list to now have new members inside us using the API, which will automatically run inside Core Connect when this is triggered. Going back into Sitecore Connect, there's one more thing that we can test. So say, for example, if we all of this data here that we're seeing is also available in the logs in Sitecore Connect. And let's say, for example, we don't want to have any kind of sensitive information, such as the email showing up here in Sitecore Connect. That's very easy to change. So I can just flip a switch here. What I can do is I can just say for this particular task, what I want to do is I just want to mask that data. So I'm just flipping that mask on and now we can just test this again to see if it's worked. So once again, I'm just going to test um, triggering this particular event to happen. So I'm going to send across that webhook that will be sent from Sitecore CDP automatically when it runs on a schedule. So that's just finished running here. I can have a look at the details, but this time if I click on these details here, I can see here that it's masked data, for example. So I can't see each of the inputs and the outputs, any of the emails that were in that file inside of here. If I exit out of my recipe that I've built here, what we can see is this is the recipe that I've set up to take my CDP audience and push it into Google Ads. I can also have a look at my each of my different jobs here. So for example, if I look at this one, this is the one I ran a few minutes ago. This will have all my details of what was in the file, including all of the emails. And if I go back out of this once again and go into the most recent job that I ran and look at this instead, I'll see it's masked. So for example, I can set up my data to be masked and then none of the details will be stored in the logs here. Other details will be stored from say tasks that don't contain any sensitive information if I don't want to mask those. I have an option for each and every task, what data I want to mask. So that's the jobs with all the logs of what's happened. I also can see here my connections that I've set up. So this is my connections to my Google's ads account. So I put in all my details here and then what it's done when I set this up was, I was basically redirected to log in with Google and set up my account. Once I've done this connection once, I can then basically continually use this inside Sitecore Connect. My second connection here then is to Sitecore CDP. Um, and the next thing and final thing I can see here inside Sitecore Connect is my version. So I can see here that I'm currently on version 33 of this recipe and I'm the one that modified it, for example. So I can see all these different details here. So I can also go back and look at previous versions and see any changes that I've made. And I can, for example, obviously restore this version or compare it to my current version and make iterations on that as well. Well, that concludes today's presentation. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.